How you guys doing today? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Don't forget the second part of the show is right on our podcast platform under the same show title. We combined a lot of stuff. China Dow will be joining us later on. Today we have a, a suspect in the Sin City Motorcycle Club's clubhouse arson. They got a video of them. They're looking for him. As well as we have a polar ride, man. It's cold here. I just can imagine it's even colder up north. I believe it's in North Dakota. Don't quote me on that until we get into the video. Uh, but yeah, it's freaking cold and it's ran by an armed forces motorcycle club. Cool stuff. Later on in the show, man, I can't believe it. What is it? I get it. People love the B twin. So all the manufacturers started copying Harley. But there's a new company coming out with an electric motorcycle that looks just like the live wire. It's like, man, now I know how they feel getting stolen from. Don't forget to visit us at InsaneThrottleTV.com as well as all our other uh, channels. Download our Roku uh, TV channel, man. We also on Amazon Fire. Here's the first story of the day. Woo, it's cold just looking at it. In West Fargo, dozens of bikers took off from the VFW for a good cause, raising money to support homeless veterans. Valley News team's Aaron Walling spoke with the bikers before they took off on their journey. Despite the single-digit temps in West Fargo, dozens of bikers made their way to the VFW to be a part of the 15th annual Below Zero Hero Motorcycle Run. It's what Brotherhood's all about, and that's what we do. We're here to help vets, serving vets, and Ooh. making everything right. And some of these military vets have come from the Deep South to be a part of all of this. Brothers from Georgia, uh, North Carolina, Maryland, Ohio, South Dakota, of course, being our neighbor right next door, they've all come up to, to support our event. The North Dakota State Chapter for these veterans is known as the Frozen Chosen. And for years, they have braved the elements and rode their motorcycles to Castleton and back to earn the patch. But it is also in support of helping homeless veterans. But to help those people that are homeless, this is for homeless veterans, uh, some of our own that are Good struggling. Good stuff right there. And uh, they want to be up here to, to help each other. Each chapter does their own thing. I think it's a great, great opportunity. And, and also look forward to helping vets in the future. In West Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. That right there is the picture or the video. Let's take it back a little bit right there. Uh, the guy that we're going to be talking about in the story coming up. Let's go ahead and roll that sucker. Can't really tell that much what uh he's wearing white and he's wearing a mask yeah that's what you can tell but that's the video that they're pulling putting out he is the suspect in the arson but let's get on to some more stuff up there in bismarck up north you crazy up there it's freezing up there nasty stuff man nasty stuff i don't need that go ahead uh, Bismarck Motorcycle Club giving back to its community. A lot, a lot of motorcycle clubs do that as well as independents. And that includes one percenters too. If you've seen our interview with Bigfoot, the international president of the Vagos, he talked about what they do. We'd love to have people come on and talk about what their motorcycle clubs are doing for the community too. Kind of push back on that perspective that the news media does put out about motorcycle clubs. Uh, Bismarck Bike Club has supported local and national charities to promote safety increase awareness of motorcycles and improve the image of bikers all while having fun we've uh, talked about the brothers keepers motorcycle club 
uh, in the past, and they're real huge as far as charitable stuff goes. And they've been around since 2009 with under 20 members, which is a good thing. It don't matter numbers. It is the quality, not the quantity. Uh, the president, Mike Maple, says the club takes pride in its brotherhood and service to the community. Uh, the club works with charities in the area, most recently the Service Dogs of America. Hell yeah, man. Service dogs right there. You know how expensive they are to get trained and all that good stuff? Woo. So it needs to, you know, a lot of people need to help out on something like that. Uh, quote, as a whole, being able to help the community and do things to try to make things better for the town, helping people who need it, look out for each other. That's probably one of the best things about being in the club. There's an awesome feeling when you help your community out. There really is. And that's what motorcycle clubs do, all of them. And to get bashed in the newspaper like some do, it's kind of messed up, isn't it? Come on, media. You can do better. Say it. We can do better. That ain't going to go. Anyway, the ATF offers a $2,500 reward for information on Sin City Motorcycle Club Clubhouse Arson. If you're over on YouTube or on the radio, you would check out the picture here. There it is in smoke, firefighter entering the building. And this was in Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, the ATF says at around 9.45 p.m., and this was October 12, 2021, uh, this was an update, uh, yeah, on the 13th uh, about this reward. And that video I showed you about a suspect, he was spotted on surveillance video walking in the back of the motorcycle club on Saley Drive, then also walking through the front door. So you have to wonder, walking through the front door, how did he get access? Did he cherry pick that sucker? Lots of questions right there. While investors say the suspect walked around with several items, including something resembling a torch, the suspect was wearing a bluish colored jacket with hood, grayish colored pants, dark colored shoes, and a head and face covering. You know, that COVID was going on last year, man. Had to wear that. You know what is always funny when people wear that stuff outside? Uh, why they're by themselves or in their car, anyway. Uh, then it talks about the Clarksville Police Department, Fire Department, Arson Investigated. They're working together on the investigation. Again, there's a $2,500 reward for information on that. And here is some still pictures. Police ATF released video of suspect in Sin City Motorcycle Club. And this is, man, he looks like he's in one of them biocontainment fields and stuff like that. Uh, you can't tell uh, if he's white, black. You can't tell from this picture. Uh, but looking from the face, it, it could be a white boy. I don't know, man. I can't say. But it does look like he's, it could be a Molotov cocktail if you're looking at it from that side. Uh, again, I'll play this real quick for you. Uh there is the suspect right there. Yeah, it was real quick. But hey, surveillance cameras make a lot of cases, man. Lots of cases. A lot of people have them in their homes, uh, the whole nine yards. So it's great to always have that type of deal so you get a look at something, you know what I mean? Uh, now, this is what I was talking about. This new electric bike company, my God. Doesn't this thing look like the freaking uh, live wire? Or is just this the new design for all electric bikes right now? Uh, Tarb Form uh, begins delivering its slick looking US built electric motorcycle. Now it's great that they're building it in the United States, but that's the almost exact style as the Livewire. Come up with your own ideas. 
Now, this company is based in New York, and they began sketching out designs for its slick-looking electric motorcycles about five years ago. Uh, despite pandemic-related uh, setbacks, the delayed production, the company is now beginning deliveries of its first ones. Uh, and they claim these aren't uh, just any of the run-of-the-mill bikes. Unlike many of the electric motorcycles we see today that take on a more conventional design intended to please the widest audience, uh, Terraform focuses on a more bespoke handmade direction from the beginning. And I don't know. I, I guess, it, you know, the aerodynamics and stuff on the side in the middle where the battery and all that go. I don't know, man. I don't know. It... it the live wire, it has style to it. This is like it tried to take some style and put their own stuff into it. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if it has, there's a little better picture right there of it. Uh, it carries, this is what, $42,000. Is inflation that bad nowadays? Uh Let's see here. Those that can wait for the 55th bike off the line can grab a Terraform Luna for a more affordable $24,000. Uh, the price then puts it in line with uh, the Energiga and uh, Harley Davidson Livewire. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour with a 41 kilowatt electric motor. Uh, about 120 miles, it says. Uh, that's a high speed, but you're not lasting it at that. Uh, the bike's uh, 10 kilowatt battery supports level two charging with a claimed two hour charge time for zero to 80% in uh, 50 minutes. But it lacks DC uh, fast charging capabilities that are becoming more popular uh, in the electric motorcycle industry. It's 440 pounds. It also comes with its unique sound profile. But there's uh, Terraform, man. It's an American uh, company, which is cool. Uh, I just, you know, I don't know, man. $24,000, that's a lot of money for a bike that you can really only ride around the city until these companies are finally able to get the range up as well as get the infrastructure in this country up with these charging stations i just don't think they're viable man i think that you're going to be doing nothing but servicing the inner cities where 120 miles will be awesome because you're not going out of a big range when you're in a big city but if you want to take these suckers across country and stuff it would take you months it'd be like the oregon trail again that's how long it's going to take you with how these charging systems are uh you know i'd give it five ten years maybe the technology will get a lot better uh sad stuff man sad stuff there's a lot of things that I don't understand why they don't put on electric uh, motorcycles as far as a charging system. That's, you know, but hey, that's another story. So $2,500 for the ATF. Uh, they're offering for information on the Sin City Disciples Clubhouse Arson. And then great story at the beginning, man, that, uh, that just sent chills up my spine looking at how cold it was. Anyway, we are going to the second half of the show right now with China Dow right after this music break. To the rest of you guys, get on over to Discord. Listen to us. It's a fun time, man. We have a big whole hoot. Rock and roll. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And you to hear all the re replays, all these shows on all the major podcasts and platforms. I'm outie.